at Psalm 85 and uh, verse number 6. Uh, it's a question. The psalmist has a question. And here's the question. Wilt thou not revive us again? Think about that. And you can learn a lot just from that question. Um, we can't revive ourselves. Now I can announce revival services. Begin when? announce that every service but does that does that guarantee that we'll be revived so you know just from this question here's what I'm finding the only one who can revive me and the only one that can revive any child of God is God it's God's work. And uh, he's the only one that can do it. But I also find from this question, I find this is a prayer for revival. The psalmist is praying. This is from the child of God. This is a prayer to God. So, um, then, a couple of important truths here. Only God can revive, and uh, it's imperative. If we're going to have revival, personal revival, church revival, that we must pray for it. I would ask you, are you praying? Are you asking? Have you been asking? If not, are you going to begin asking God to revive you again? Do, uh, wilt thou not revive us again? But there's more to the question in verse 6 of Psalm 85. Psalm 85, verse 6. That thy people may do what? So you, you connect the dots. Revival is connected to what? In the life of every believer. No revival, there's no what? There's no rejoicing. It's, it's just, you know, kind of a troublesome chore to... Do those things that you know God would have you to do when they're being done other than in revival. It's just kind of a drudgery. It's just kind of a, well, I, I, I know I have to do this. Uh, I know I should do this. And uh, I mean, boy, look at everything that is packed into this question. And something else I'm finding out, <clears throat> the only ones who can be revived are which group of people? Find your answer from verse 6. Thy people. God's people. Um, the word revive indicates there was a spiritual condition at one time that for whatever the reason it ceased it stopped um, you know uh, boy that this wasn't in my notes but the thought just came to mind so bear with me And uh, Psalm 51, if you care to look, Psalm 51. It's 
So what we've learned from the psalmist, revival Rejoicing. The two are inseparable. Without one, you don't have the other. Um, and Psalm 51. And uh, verse number 12. This is a psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet came to, unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. And so the whole point of mentioning this. Why had David lost his joy? Well, look at verse 12. What is he praying for? You know, did you notice he's not asking God to save him again? Because he didn't lose his salvation, but do you know what he did lose? He lost his joy. He lost the joy of the Lord. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. You know, it's possible to be saved and be joyless. To be saved, forgiven of all your sins, on the way to heaven, but, but not rejoicing. And uh, how did David lose his joy? I mean, see, so we're looking at, uh, we're looking at how joy is lost, and uh, David lost his by sin. And so he's praying, he's pleading with God. He's, um, I mean, do uh, you know what everybody wants? Do you know what everybody wants? Everybody wishes for it, everybody hopes for it. You know, you know what everybody wants as they journey through life? They, they just want to be joyful. Uh, another way to say it, and, and the Bible does use it interchangeably, is I just want to be happy. I just like to be happy. Well, um, the Hebrew word is uh, is phonetically pronounced kaya, and uh, the definition. Listen to this definition: to restore to life or consciousness. Listen to that. To be restored to life or consciousness. Consciousness of what? If I need to be revived, what, what have I lost consciousness about? God? Just, he's no longer at the forefront of my heart, my mind, my life. He's just kind of an afterthought. Revive, restore to life or consciousness. It means to regain life, regain life or strength. It means to give new strength or energy, restore interest in God. I don't know why it's so hard for me to open the Bible up. I don't know why it's just gotten... Come so hard for me to go to church, and, and it's not, and it's not that I don't go to church. It's that I could really care less about being here. I mean, um, and uh, my prayer life, I, my, I have no desire to serve God. I. Other things are be 
replacing God. Other things are becoming more important than God. It's the restoration of interest in God. It is to improve the spiritual condition of God's people. Revival. Wow. Psalm 85. Verse number 6. Wilt thou not revive us again? And he states the reason that thy people may rejoice in thee. There's another important truth from this question. What then is the source of joy for the child of God? Is it things, things, and more things? Is it what then is the source of joy for the child of God? If not things, then what? What is the source, the catalyst for joy in the heart of the child of God? How about God? Looking in all the wrong places and coming up empty. And failing to look to the one person, the only person who can bless the child of God with joy. And that is God. That is God. Wow. Let me look at something here because uh, another thought here came to mind. And uh, just bear with me here for just a quick, quick moment. Isaiah 55, look it over there. Isaiah chapter 55. <laughs> Just going to look at verse number two here. Verse number two, wherefore do you spend money for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, God says, listen, and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. That's an abundance of joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Does not fulfill, does not bring contentment, does not satisfy, does not fulfill. This is a plea for revival. It's a plea. It's a prayer. Are you praying for revival? We're announcing revival. So what? Are you praying for are you praying for personal revival and are you praying for corporate revival for God to revive this church? It's not going to happen without prayer. The agency of revival, Psalm 119. Press on just a little bit more in Psalm chapter 119. Huh. 
we find the psalmist in such a spiritual state and we find him pleading with God. Obviously, he's lost his joy. We can discern that from his prayer. Psalm 119, verse 25, My soul cleaveth unto the, unto the what? Now, you know, today, today in modern vernacular, we would say, I'm really down. And some would try to make light of it and say, I'm so low, I have to pull my socks down to sneeze. It's pretty low. But he's lower than that. He's, he's I mean, he's down, all the way down. I'm down. David says, I'm down. Ah. But he doesn't leave us there. He gives us the antidote. Verse 25, and so he prays, quicken thou me, quicken thou me, according to thy what? What then is the agency of revival? The word of God. That's why the evangelist is going to preach the word. He's going to preach the word. The revival services are all centered around the word of God. But are you praying? Are you asking God? There's a song. The song went, Revive Us Again. The hymn, Revive Us Again. And I look forward to singing that. Uh, that's put to song a plea unto God for revival. Revive us again. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. I'm, I'm down. I'm, I'm, I'm in the dumps. I'm lower than I've ever been. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Want revival? Number one, if you want revival, better start asking God for revival. Number two, if you want revival, you better resort to God's word. Get alone with God and let God have some alone time with you and meet with God there in the pages of his word And be quickened. It may, remember, the definition of revival is to regain life or strength. Regain your life. Be strengthened from the word of God. Have your interest in God restored by the word of God. Improve your spiritual condition by the word of God. Wow, verse 40, Psalm 119, verse 40. <clears throat> Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me. Make me alive again in thy righteousness. If you want revival, you must desire revival. If you could care less, don't, don't expect revival. But the psalmist says, I have longed after thy precepts. Verse 50, Psalm 119, verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction. Affliction. Affliction? What's affliction? Trouble. <laughs> Trouble. Life's reversals. 
Yeah. Problems. Trials. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word, even when I'm down as far down as the dust of the ground, even when I'm having all kinds of uh, affliction, problems, trouble, trials. David points us the way to go. Thy word, the word of God hath quickened me, quickened me. I'm revived by the word of God. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2. I'll race you there. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse number 2. Again, we find a man of God praying. It's a prayer. Verse 1, a prayer of Habakkuk. Verse 2, the content of the prayer. Oh, Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. You know what Habakkuk realized is he could not make it without God's word. He had to have God's word. He had reverence. He had respect for the word of God. And the prayer, what is he praying for? Oh, Lord, what is he asking God to do? Revival is not a modern phenomenon. It's throughout the generations of God's people. Oh, Lord, revive thy work. Huh. Whose work is it? It's God's work. It's God's work. Um. Do you want to see God do a new work? You know, you can complain all day long. You can complain all year long about the work. (laughs) But that's not going to do any good. But do you know what will do some good? And really the only thing that will do any good Do you want God to do a new work in your heart, in your life? Do you want God to do a new work in his church? Habakkuk says, Revival is predicated upon two things, the word of God and prayer unto God. I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Habakkuk didn't have a take it or leave it attitude about the word of God. The word of God to Habakkuk was absolutely indispensable. He understood that if there's to be a revival... The word of God is central to revival, and he understood by virtue of the fact he's praying for revival. Oh, Lord, revive thy work 
in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years, make no one in wrath remember mercy. Philippians chapter 1, as it pertains to God's work, What is God's work, by the way? Philippians chapter 1. What is God's work? Philippians. What is this? Revive thy work. What is this work that we're asking God to revive? Philippians chapter 1. What is the work of God? Verse 6. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a what? A, a good work where? In you. You are his work. You, brother. You, sister. You, church. You are God's work. You are the work. your mind around that you are God's work <sighs> he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it the word perform means complete finish it until the day of Jesus Christ until the uh until Jesus comes in the air for us to catch us up. He's at work. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. Wilt thou not revive us again? Living your Christianity outside of revival is just a troublesome kind of chore. Just a drudgery. But when God is pleased to bless with revival, well, all that appertains to the Lord Jesus Christ, his word, his work, becomes cause for great joy in our hearts and our lives. Psalm 138, and uh, we'll drop down to verse 6. I'm going to read through verse number 8. Psalm 138, verse 6. Though the Lord be high, yet he... Yet hath he respect unto, unto who? The lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Verse 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt. Revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of of thine own hands. Brings us back again to what is God's work? From the psalmist here, David, what, what hinders revival, what gets in the way of revival, 
Verse 6, the last statement, verse 6, do you see it? But the proud he knoweth afar off. Pride. Pride. Pride is living for self. But, oh, but the lowly, the lowly. Now those who, who live for God's pleasure, but the prideful live for self-pleasure. Uh, what hinders revival? Pride. The work of God, Matthew 16, verse 18. Matthew 16, verse 18. The work of God. I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. What is God's work? You are. What is the church? You know Jesus. You're the church. You're his work. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A final passage I would call your attention to, Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. The prideful will not be revived. And God knoweth them afar off. Isaiah 57, verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to, to do what in their spirit? Who gets revival? Well, not the proud, not the prideful, not the arrogant, not, not the self-serving, the self-pleasing. No, no, only the lowly are candidates who are the candidates for revival, the humble those who are dedicated to living for God's pleasure, not self, living for God's pleasure. It only seems right, the one who purchased us with the blood of his only begotten son, it only seems right that we should be living for his good pleasure in humility, in lowliness, instead of living for self-pleasure and pride, I mean, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. See, pride, you know what pride does not want to do? Do you understand what pride does, never wants to do? Pride never wants to admit when pride has done wrong. This is pride. Pride always looks to assign the fault somewhere else. Instead of stepping up and accepting personal responsibility for one's own actions, one's own decisions, and taking ownership of that and stop blaming everybody else. See, the problem is there's a lot of people out there who made their own bed. And don't you know, 
after making their own bed. How's that saying go? You know those old sayings. You, you make your own bed, and then you got to sleep in it. How does that saying actually go? Huh? You, you make your bed, now you got to lie in it. See, what pride, do, what pride does, pride doesn't want to take ownership of the choices and the actions that were, that were made, that were done, doesn't want to admit it, always trying to find somebody else to blame. God says to that person, you'll have no revival. But God promises, this is a promise of God, and this is who will have revival. It's a man or a woman of God who can say uh, unto God, I've done wrong. I admit it. I take ownership of it. God, I'm sorry and mean it. Stop blaming everybody else. God says to that man or that woman, God says, I'll give you revival. But then that's born out of a heart of humility instead of pride. Wow. Let me read verse 15 again. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I, 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 dwell, in the, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite. What does that word mean? Contrite means it means when you do wrong, you Admit it. Instead of trying to blame everybody else, you just take ownership of it. And be honest with God about it. God says to that man or that woman, I promise revival. But then that's humility. That's, humi that's what humility does. Pride always tries to point the finger of blame at somebody else. Verse 18, please. <clears throat> if you would drop down to verse 18. Uh, uh, I, I have uh, seen his ways and, and will heal him to the contrite, to the penitent, to the repentant. God says, I have seen his ways. And because he's lowly, because he's contrite, God says, I will heal him. So we're, heal me? Heal me? Where do I need to be healed? Well, you know, you know what part of your tripart being is most affected by sin against God? Anybody? The psalmist tells us what part of his tripart beating did he injure? Did he hurt the most by his sin against God? Your soul. Your soul. <laughs> so we get so hung up on the body, the physical, but the psalmist says that the part that he hurt most was his soul. He injured his soul. Healing? What needs to be healed? Your soul needs to be healed. You're so hung up on this, stuck on the physical. You got a soul. And that soul is injured by sin against God. I, I, I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore what to him? To the man or the woman who's willing to be contrite, who's willing to take ownership of, the, of their uh, sinful choices and their sin, sinful actions, is willing to be honest with God about it. God says, I will restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I, 
I will comfort him. See, the, uh, oh, the first word in the definition of revive, the very first word of the definition is to restore. You know what God's saying? I will revive the man or the woman that is honest with me about the wrong that they've done, who doesn't walk around pointing their finger of blame at everybody else. It's everybody else's fault. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Well, we all make choices. Well, we all have to live with the choices we make. But God says, I will comfort that man or woman. I, I will restore. And that's the first word in the definition of revival. I will revive. Verse 19, I create the fruit of the lips. Peace. Peace to him that is far off, to him that is near, saith the Lord. I and I will Heal him. Do you need healing? Have you injured your soul by sin? Be honest with God about the wrong you've done. Be contrite. Stop blaming everybody else. God says, I will heal you. I will comfort you. I will restore you. I will revive you again. Ah, <laughs> uh, but, verse, but verse 20. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Uh, wicked. What does God mean by this word wicked? No. No. Those who know that Christ died for their sins, those who know that Jesus was buried and that he rose again the third day, having defeated sin, having broken the power of sin, having defeated death, having defeated hell, having defeated Satan, having defeated the, uh, the world, and, and having defeated the flesh. Well, they know this about Jesus, but they still reject him anyway. They're unwilling to be penitent to be contrite, to repent. And God says in verse 21, here's the definition of their life, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Do you want revival? Have you been asking for personal revival? Have you been asking God to revive Gateway Baptist Church? Do you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy? Uh, we've learned that, well, let's conclude where we started. Psalm 85, let's go back to Psalm 85. Psalm 85. Verse 6, the psalmist. His prayer, his plea to God. Wilt thou not revive us again? Huh. What is he saying? He doesn't want to spend the rest of his days on earth 
joyless. But what is he after? Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may do what? Rejoice in thee. He doesn't want to spend another day unhappy. Without gladness. Doesn't want to spend another day as a child of God miserable. He, he's not going to settle for an unhappy life. He's going to God in prayer. And he's pleading with God, as David did, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Wow. I guess the question boils down to this. How, how important is it to you to be joyful? How important is it to you to be glad? The Bible does even use the word happiness. How important is that to you? Or would you settle to spend the rest of your days without joy? The psalmist wasn't about to. Well, that's a question you have to answer. Oh, God, help us, I pray. Help us, Lord. Um, bless your word. Um, I, I guess, Father... Do you find us desiring revival? Or do you find us content to be unhappy, to be without joy? How are you finding us, Heavenly Father? Mm. God, bless your word, help us. You're the only one who can. Do you find us prideful? Not wanting to take responsibility for the choices, the actions we've made. Do you find us humble? Willing to be honest with you. And not just to be honest with you, but, but willing to say thank you that I met with the consequences of my actions. Thank you, Lord. You have validated your word in my life. You warned me, you told me, but I didn't listen, and I've met with the consequences of my choices, and I accept personal responsibility. How do you find us in pride or humility, God? Well, God, please revive us again. Revive us again. Help us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.